everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and this is Lap of the World. If you've been following the channel recently or if you joined us for NS Expedition 2023, you will have seen the announcement or know that we have our black NSX back in the stable now with 317,000 miles on the odometer. However, both at Expedition and in that video, we did not do a whole lot of explaining as far as what's different. Uh, and since that has been a source of rampant speculation across all of our social media, I figure it was probably about time we pull over and talk about it. First, just getting this out of the way and saving even the most hawk-eyed among you the trouble, there is nothing different on the outside of the car. Uh, there will be zero changes that you'll be able to spot without getting inside the car in one way or the other. So, let's go do that now. Stopping first in the cabin, you'll note no changes to the gauge cluster, but you will notice that a navigation pod has manifested on top of our dashboard. However, this one isn't for driving directions. The magic happens here when we turn the car on. We are now presented with an entire suite of data courtesy of an AEM CD7 race dash set up by Science of Speed. This data includes engine RPM, GPS derived speed, throttle position, coolant temperature, and critically oil temperature and oil pressure. The oil temperature comes from a sending unit that we added to the oil pan. The oil pressure, unlike the heavily damped meter that's on your gauge cluster in your stock NSX, this one is accurate down to the split second. So you will know, hopefully in enough time, if something starts to go sideways there. As the layout also suggests, this will do lap timing as well. So you can look forward to a little more dataful uh, overlays on future track videos. Now, while this is cool and nice to have, I know it's not why most of you are watching this video. We'll do a little bit more on the CD7 in a future installment, but for now, Let's go pop the engine cover. With the engine cover out of the way, you are now allowed to look and see if you can spot what's different. On this episode of Where's Waldo Lap of the World Edition, nearly everything, nearly everything that you can see in frame right now is original to the car. Critically, you'll note that the throttle body is still connected to the uh, stock air box over here, which will cure some speculation. Also, there's nothing on top of that intake manifold, no, nothing bolted onto there. Uh, so take just a second and see if you can spot something that's different. There are some clues, but they are very few and kind of small. Allow me to help. There is a new fuel pressure gauge. And if you look closely enough right there, you'll see an AEM logo on what is a fuel pressure regulator. Now the gauge is just there as a matter of course, but the fuel pressure regulator, that was needed to adjust fuel flow to compensate for a little bit of additional displacement. You see, this car is now powered by a C32B bottom end. This came from our friend, uh, Peter Cunningham, <laughs> and it was literally in the wrapper from Honda when we got it. So we have a, an absolutely fresh C32B bottom end with C30A heads and an adjustable fuel pressure regulator to make sure things are getting uh, enough fuel. It actually got better gas mileage on the way back from Arizona than I think we've seen in the car previously. Typically, on our eastbound leg, we'd still only been averaging like 23 miles to the gallon, if you guys have seen our last couple of NS Expo cross countries. However, this time we were pushing 25 or 26. So, uh, we've gained there, and we've also gained some other stuff too. Now, I had this car dynoed back in 20, I wanna say 2014 or 15 and it put down 267 horsepower to the wheels with the old C30A and, the, and uh, an actually less restrictive exhaust setup than what's on the car now. It, had, it was basically straight piped at the time. 
And granted, I mean, there's some differences here. We're slightly different elevation than, uh, than Phoenix, but not a massive difference there. So with the, with the grain of salt that all dynos are different, uh, what looks like nearly 280 at the wheels is definitely a gain on what we had previously and is a massive gain over a bone stock uh, in A1. So back in the car, how are these changes going to impact my ownership and driving experience? <laughs> we'll start with the ownership experience, which I think is mostly the added data. Um, having a fresh engine is, of course, uh, a very nice uh, peace of mind. However, also being able to monitor that fresh engine at way more uh, high resolution is going to be a boon and letting me, you know, decide when to quit while I'm ahead at, you know, a hot track day before the oil and coolant temperatures get to the point where things could get kind of dicey. Uh, also, it's going to increase production value for my videos. I'll be able to share a lot more with you. It's got, you know, as I described, it's wired for throttle position and the brake switch uh, because there isn't like a brake position sensor in these cars. So you got to do it, you're working with what we got a little bit there. But I think that's going to be mainly an ownership piece. I think what a lot of you or probably most of you are more curious about is how the driving experience is different with the added displacement and uh, what what does that graph that I showed you actually mean in uh, from a butt dyno standpoint? <laughs> what does a real dyno mean on your butt dyno? And I think that is going to be, uh, that has already been noticed. Uh, there is a difference. It's not a massive difference, but the added torque, uh, you definitely feel it. Um, yeah, most notably, since we were we, up at NS Expedition, we drove uh, up the Dragon. So that's from the Tennessee side to the North Carolina side, which is mostly uphill. And those tight uphill switchbacks in second gear, uh, having driven that road a lot previously, it was always a little bit painful. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. You can only carry so much speed in there and sensibly carry so much speed into those tight turns. And so pulling out of the turn in second gear, because you're not gonna go all the way down to first, even if the ratio would let you, but pulling out of, the, out of those turns in second gear in these cars with the long ratios, you, you know, I've got a stock USDM five speed. Um, with those long ratios, it was always a little bit like, okay, you know, kind of got to wait for the car to like get on its horse a little bit before it would really giddy up. Now though, <laughs> when you mat the gas in second gear, you're going somewhere well before VTEC kicks in. <laughs> and that was noticeable. I, you know, I think the people that were immediately behind me on the drive appreciated it as well, because our, uh, our pace up that direction was probably a little higher than usual. I do feel a little bit bad that we dropped part of the group, but um, to be fair, everybody I could still see in my mirror was keeping up. Um, <laughs> an ex-motorcycle racer and two people that run a uh, track day, uh, <laughs> a track day provider. So. Uh, grain of salt there but yeah no anyway the added torque is very noticeable but I think at the end of the day uh, from a performance standpoint the tail will be told by the stopwatch at NS Expo this year at AMP that is a place that we have been before with this NSX with its uh, <laughs> previous arrangement so when we're able to get out there and set a new time at uh, AMP on approximately similar tires uh, hopefully in slightly cooler conditions, then we'll kind of know where we're at. Uh, and I am horribly curious, and you can look forward to that video. <laughs> but uh, having brought you guys up to date and kind of given you my at least initial impressions of driving the car post-surgery, if you're looking forward to seeing the car at NS Expo, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, we will have a little bit to go on this as far as our prep, we're gonna do a little bit of a glow up that we'll hopefully get at least some of done in time. Uh, we are running a little bit tight because I'm actually filming this probably a month with one month to go to NS Expo. And that's always a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit, we're, we're cutting it close as usual, but uh, so we're gonna have a little bit of a glow up and you'll be able to watch part of that on YouTube. But uh, if you wanna see me kind of in the nitty gritty of that, you can follow, also uh, check us out over on Twitch where we'll be doing some of the work live. Um, Tuesdays and Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern time, uh, most of the time. If there is a, uh, a change to that schedule, we will post it and make sure you guys are aware. 
uh, if you do follow us over there. But I think I'm looking forward to Expo this year for a number of reasons. Uh, obviously, having the car back and not having to miss an Expo because it wasn't back yet is, is amazing, considering the situation. Um, <laughs> and more on that situation because the next video that you're going to see on the channel, though, will not be glow up yet, but rather it will be uh, the actual, uh, the entire story of how we got to this point with having the car back with a hybrid in a 1.3 or whatever I'm going to call it. Uh, <laughs> set up so that's where we're going to leave it though look forward to that next time if you want to hear the whole story uh, Liz and I are going to be uh, we're going to post up in the garage to tell that tale so uh, join us bring a stiff drink and uh, you know prepare to laugh and cry in equal parts probably but <laughs> look forward to that and until next time though I'm Richard this is Laugh of the World We'll see you guys all in the next video, if not down at NS Expo 2023 at AMP and around the Atlanta area.